Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning once again. This is Messengers of Light in the Antilles, praising the Lord Jesus Christ and giving him glory always. God is good. He is always with us. This is Messengers of Light, and we would like to greet you. And guess what? I would like to tell you the good news that Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. He rose on the third day and he's coming back for you and for me. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave <clears throat> his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible says that he didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through the Lord Jesus Christ, the world might be saved. If you don't know Jesus, all, all you have to do is ask God the Father about him. A lot of people are trying to get to God, but there's only one way to God. It's through the Son. And if you come to him and you humble yourself and you ask God to forgive you of all your sins, the Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive you. So Jesus loves you, he cares about you, and he is waiting for you to humble yourself and ask for forgiveness. If you ask for forgiveness for your sins, he takes your name, writes it in the Lamb's Book of Life. He fills you with the Holy Spirit. He seals you unto the day of redemption, and then he comes and picks us up on the day of his coming. Hallelujah. In the taking away, he will come in a cloud and we will be caught up with those that are dead in Christ and we will be with him forever. Hallelujah. There'll be a holy meeting in heaven. Praise the Lord. The dead in Christ first and then us that are alive and remain will be caught up with him. So we praise the Lord for one more chance to talk about the things of the Lord and pray about the things that God wants us to pray about. So uh, we're going to say hello, first of all. Kat, can you say good morning? Good morning, everybody. God bless you all. Amen. Brother Rafael, can you say good morning? Good morning, everybody. God bless you all. Amen. Angelic voices. BJ, can you say good morning? Good morning. Good morning. God bless all. Good morning. God bless you. Amen. If you kindly uh, mute your mics when you're done talking, please. Um, Apostle, say good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. God bless. Sister Sylvia, can you say good morning? Or Vinny, because it's either one of them. They both say Sylvia on it. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> good morning, Vinny. And oh, Sister Kiona, hallelujah. Can you say good morning? Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. We still have our prayer team coming in. Hallelujah. I myself was running, oh, a, little, oh, running a little late. So, oh, Sister oh, Sylvia, oh. can you say good morning? <sighs> Good morning, everyone. God bless. Amen. Praise God. We're going to uh, let you know that if you ever interested in coming into these prayer team, you just got to contact us at PastorLizardoZambra at gmail.com. You can always look us up on YouTube on Lizardo Zambra, just like you see it on the screen. Hallelujah. And if you look for us in, um, in YouTube, I mean, in um, Facebook, you can look for us at pastors. The same way you see mine, my, my screen, it says pastor. You just add a little S after pastor with pastors Zambra. And you can find us on Facebook. Hallelujah. And um, you can always find us in angelicvoicesministries.com. If you guys are interested in any TV time, it doesn't matter how small or big your church is or or even if you just feel like preaching the gospel and you need to get on, you know, just messenger us. If the Holy Spirit is directing you to evangelize the souls of the world, nothing's too big, nothing's too small. This platform is opened up for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we believe that God is going to touch every person for the glory of his God, according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
God says no one can come to the Father except the Holy Spirit draws them. And we believe that the Holy Spirit is drawing his body for his will. Hallelujah. And um, all that being said, I would like to ask Kathy to please pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, dear Lord God. Jesus, thank you, Lord Father, for this morning. I thank you for waking us up, for allowing us, Father Jesus, to be able to see this day of, uh, of life and to be able, Father Jesus, a man to to uh, wake up and to be able to breathe, uh, to to walk and, and smell and touch. And Father, we're just so blessed. There are so many people out there that unfortunately did not have a chance, Father Jesus, to see this day. And we have, Father Jesus, the the uh, the blessing, Father Jesus, amen, to be able to do that, to be able to get up and to be able to go to work and to come into the Zoom meeting this morning, Father. And I thank you for everything, dear Lord God, Father, amen. Um, uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter the the struggle. It doesn't matter the the fiery darts of the enemy that he throws at us. Uh, in our in our in our in our lifetime in our in our days amen for for lord your word says dear lord god father jesus amen that that lord you you will give us the victory no matter what father no matter what is going on in our lives it doesn't matter what situation anything we, we may be going through right now father jesus lord You give us the victory in the end. You overcame everything, Father Jesus. And you give us the power. You give us that power, Father Jesus. I meant to overcome, Father, every obstacle, every mountain in our lives, dear Lord God Jesus. And I believe, dear Lord God, Father, that this meeting this morning, Father Jesus, that you will inspire us, Father, and you will lead us, Lord, and you will talk to us personally, Father, in your name, because the Holy Spirit, your spirit, Father, is going to guide us and lead us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Um, I want to say a verse before I start praying. It's actually Deuteronomy uh, chapter uh, 33, verse 27. It's a beautiful verse that God put upon my heart to read. And if you want to follow me there, you can. It's Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. It's a beautiful verse, man. and it reads like this: "In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And He shall thrust out the enemy before thee, and shall say, Destroy them." So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come humbly before the throne of grace. I thank you, Lord, for this beautiful prayer meeting. Continue to bless all hearts and mind here, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Continue to break every satanic yoke, anything that's not of you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we just thank you. We glorify your name, Lord. You said if two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst, Father God. And we just glorify your name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper, Lord. We're going to continue to go forth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Continue to bless the apostle and the bishop as they lead us. Father God, continue to use them for your glory, Father God. We are waiting to hear from you. But Father God, all those that are listening now, Lord, we pray for healing, for breakthroughs, for deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we just thank you, Lord, and we plead the blood of Jesus over every situation, Lord, because no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And we're going to continue to go forth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank Hallelujah. you so much, Lord. Oh, uh, we're going to have the, the pastor with the reading of the word. Amen. God bless everybody. Once again, let's go to the book of Romans, chapter five. Book of Romans, uh, chap chapter five, verse starting verse one. <clears throat> you find, give me amen. Amen. Uh Just the Romans chapter 5, verse 1, starting in verse 1. Amen. Amen. Right, you have it? You got it, Yadi? Yadi, you have it? 
Amen. Romans chapter Amen. five, right in front of me. All right. All right. All right. Let's just start. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Therefore, being, being therefore having been justified by faith, we have peace through God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we've been justified through faith, saints. When you came out the world, you were sanctified. We were shepherd for the law. Second stage, you were justified in God's sight. When God sees you, you see the blood of Christ all over you. He sees the seal of the Holy Spirit. And we got peace through our Lord. Now God has given us his peace. If we go quickly to Isaiah 32, verse 17. What says in chapter 32, Isaiah, verse 16, 17, 18, on the promise of peace? This is for the millennial, but not to us now. They're walking in Christ. This is what it says in chapter 16, chapter 32, Isaiah. But we'll go back to Romans. The just will the will in the wilderness. Justice, justice will the will in the wilderness. Righteousness remain in the fruitful field. What a bird. Look at that. The work of righteousness will be at peace. The effect of the righteous and quiet and insurance forever. Look what says 18. My people will the will peaceful in habitation and secure the willing and the quiet resting place. That's what we're in Christ. You see, this comes down to those outside the law. This is what's inside the law. They're working with the law. They're faithful to the Lord. If you believe this promise belongs to you, why? Because you've been one justified in God's sight through his blood of Jesus Christ by faith. And you got the peace of Christ. You got the peace of God. Nobody could give to you. The world is no peace out there. Out there is upside down. And God, we got peace. Amen? We walk in the peace of the Holy Spirit, the God the Father. He gave us the peace, not, not the world. The world cannot give us peace. The world is, is trouble. It's full of crazy and madness. I'm, I'm telling you, you go. You see people going berserk out there, man. They're trying to find solutions to drugs, through through a psychic, to a through a palm reader, uh, you name it, through uh, yogi, whatever. All these people, all these false religions, it's the religions. Forget about it. And they cannot find it there. It got to be through God Himself, through Jesus Christ. Because He, the Word says, I say He's the called the Prince of Peace. That's one of His names. Amen. Number two, now verse two. Through whom we have access by faith again, see by faith through his throne and through his grace, in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So, you know, we are access not by faith, we enter God's uh, presence now through faith, through, through the Son of through the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, look what it says in Ephesians, comparisons to the to this verse, and thank you, Lord. In chapter uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12, look what it says. Thank you, Lord. Uh, whom we have as bonus. Access, gain confidence toward faith in him. You see that? So we got access unto the faith and bonus to enter God's presence through faith. We got confidence in the Lord. He has given us that confidence. So we don't have to worry about nothing. He's going to give us the victory. Again, again, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. Through whom, who gives us, it's the same verse, same chapter. For, through whom we, through whom him we both have access and one spirit in the Father. You see that? Because it's 19. Now, therefore, we are no longer strangers or foreigners. But fellow citizens and the other saints are the members of the household of God. So now you become a citizen of the law. You're in God's presence. You belong to God's household of the law. Outside the law, you're a stranger. Outside, those, outside the Lord Jesus, you're a foreigner. God doesn't know you. When you come to us as a civil as personal savior, God will accept you. God will wash you with his blood. God will deliver you. God will instruct you. God will deliver, transform your life forever. That's what Paul says to your Corinthian saints. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things pass away, all things become brand new. So I mean, you got a new nature. And that nature belongs to God's people. You, you're walking in the spirit. God bless you, Jackie. You're in the spirit now. You're walking in things of the heavenly thing. You're in God's kingdom of light, not of darkness. Those are outside God's, outside the house of God, household of God, outside the Lord's presence. They are in darkness regardless of what they're doing. God ain't going to accept that. It got to be through Jesus Christ. That's what he told his disciples. I am the way, the truth, and the way. He said, I am the door. He said, those will go for me are thieves and robbers. So we got to stay in Jesus Christ, stay inside the Lord, stay in his will, stay in his presence, stay in his word, and live the word. And God's going to do the rest. Can I get amen? Can I get amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I don't hear no amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So we got to stay in the presence of the Lord. Because of him, he's going to give us the midst of chaotic, the midst of confusion and problems and situations. He's going to give you that peace that what can I give you? God's going to protect you from, from the from the madness all around us, amen. Um, uh, praise the Lord. Let's go now to three. What says in three? Um, now, not only but we also we also glory in tribulations. Remember, we're going to go to tribulations, knowing that tribulation was the purpose produces uh produce uh produce preserving. That means patience. God wants you to preserve. If I take it quickly to James, look at this in the book of James, Apostle James, about preserving this, our patience. We need to endure, saints. We need to grow in that avenue. We need to grow in that fruit, of the spirit, that's a character. 
of the spirit. Look what says James chapter one and verse three. Look what says in verse two and three. And my brother, count all joys when you fall in driver's trials. You see, you're going to go to trial. Knowing that the testing, that's going to test. You see, testing your faith produce patience. I want you to grow in patience. Person without patience will never make it. Person without patience will always fall in traps. A person goes before, before the time, it's going to mess up big time. You got to have patience to constant to meditate. What God, you got to do before you make that move, before you make that talk, before you say something. You got to wait on the Lord. Because if you go without the Lord's patience, you're going to mess up yourself up. That's, that's you got to have the patience of the Spirit, amen? So he could guide you and lead you to all truth. But as many in this walk, they're doing their own little thing. They're walking before God. They're getting in trouble. I don't know where to start crying big tears because nobody tells them to go before, before ahead of time. If you don't go in patience, how do you expect you God to use you? How do you expect God to give you the wisdom, understanding if you're going before him? It's like an ABC. You got to start from the beginning. You let the Holy Spirit have it his way. He wants you to preserve. He wants you to do it. What's this number four now? In verse four now. This is in chapter five, Romans five. No, verse, chapter five, verse four. And perseverance or patience again. Perseverance is, is patience. Perseverance is character and character hope. You see, he wants you to not grow in character. And once you start growing the character of, the, of God, you're going to start growing in, in, in the hope. You're going to have hope for everything else. So it says in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Chapter 11, verse 1, faith is a substance hopeful, evidence not seen. You will see that. So we got, we got stuff, we believe for something by patience, by enduring when we're going to that character of the spirit. And then we don't grow, we're going to receive nothing because we're not, we're not believing for it. But you got to have that character. Repeat it, what's it? Preserves is character and character hope. God wants you to go in the character of the fruits of the spirit. Because once you start growing the fruits of the spirit, God could stop manifesting the soul to your life and transform you forever. Look what says in and, and get back in James chapter 1 and verse 12. James, James in chapter 1 again, verse 12. You can write it down your papers. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been uh proved, you see, God's gonna prove us, he may receive the corner of life which the Lord has promised those who love him. You see that? So we gotta endure, my brother and sister. We gotta endure. You see that? This says 13. Let no one say when I'm tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted. God tempts no one by evil. It says right there. The devil tempts you. God tempts you, but the enemy tempts you. But does he himself tempts no one? You see? Look what says 14. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire and enticed. You see that? You got to crucify that desire. You got to crucify that lust. Amen? We're going to be enticed. That's what he wants. Look at the results. Um, 15. And when desire has, it's like a baby when the when gets pregnant. Look at this. Look at this. With our, our husband. Look at this. But by the way, Desire has conceived, it gives birth. What birth to? To sin, my God. And sin, when it's fully grown, it, it brings forth death. You see what happens when you play around? When you don't submit to the will of God, when you're walking in the other area of the flesh and the, out of, of the all corrupted man. This is 16. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. You cannot get deceived. Make sure you're walking in the order of God. Make sure you're walking in the fruits of the Spirit so you continue growing the thing. Because you're growing the opposite, it's going to cost you big time. And that's what the enemy wants. He could get you. We don't want that, man. Look at this five, five now, verse five now. Back to uh, Romans five five. No hope, Lord, but now hope does not disappoint us because the love well, of God. Five been... five. Yes, yes. <clears throat> now hope does not disappoint us because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit and was given to us. You see, so you're not disappointed. You have to be disappointed because God's giving you His love. When you're disappointed because something's wrong with your spiritual so you got to check your spiritual war. God didn't give you, you have, you have to, whatever happened, God's going to give you the victory. God allows stuff sometimes in life for a purpose so we can grow in his character, grow in the fruits of the spirit. Do you see that? You see that? You got to grow in the things of the spirit because the enemy doesn't want that. He wants you to murder. He wants you to complain against God. God says, no. God hates complaining. He wants you to worship. When the, the, when the Israelites came out of Egypt, top of the world, the Hebrews came out of Egypt, they started complaining, murdering. God hated that. And he told Moses, why are they murmuring against me? Why they don't believe in me? In other words, when you murmur and complain, you, you, know, you say God cannot do it. God cannot do it. The God is short. The God doesn't have the power. And then them say, yeah, keep it up. Got to rebuke that. You got to stop worshiping, praising the Lord. Can I get amen? Amen. 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 You see, that's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, who has also sealed us and has given us the spirit and the heart of guarantee. So we've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. You've been sealed by God himself. You see that? So you're walking in the wisdom of God. You're walking in God's truth. And God is moving you. And God is preparing you. I repeat, hope does not disappoint us because the love of God has been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit and who, who was given to us. He has given us the Holy Spirit and the seal. 
you be a guarantee. And he's the one who's controlling you. He's the one who's guiding you. Who's I'm watching you? Who's controlling you? Are your emotions controlling you? Are people controlling you? Or the Holy Spirit is controlling you? You got to check out yourself. That's what says Paul. And I repeat, Paul says that in 2 Corinthians in chapter 13, the last verse, he says in verse 5, because he says in verse 5, examine yourself. Wherever you are in the faith, you see, you got to examine yourself. You got to make sure you walk in the Lord. Test yourself. Do you not know yourself that Christ, Jesus Christ is in you unless you are disqualified? Look at that verse. It says there. So we got to examine ourselves and test us for the God is walking with us. You got to make sure you're walking with the Lord. Sometimes people don't do that and they want to do what they're supposed to be doing. Oh, because I'm a this, I'm Christian. I'm going to heaven. You're going nowhere, man. What you're doing, you're playing with the things of the world. You're playing with that flesh and you, you're going to get, sooner you're going to get disqualified. Because you're not, you're not protecting your walk. So this is back in Hebrews, uh, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So we got to work it out. We got to fight for our salvation. You got to work it out. You got to nourish it. You got to build it. You came out of the world. Now you got to nourish that walk with the Lord. You got to, in other words, it's not a religious walk. It's a relationship. You got to make sure you nourish your relationship with the Lord by staying faithful to your Lord, by staying obedient to his voice, by committing your soul to the Lord. And the more you walk, you're going to have a good, rich relationship with the Lord. And God's going to visit you. God's going to talk to you. One on one. But you got to make sure you're walking with the Lord. You have back to that soul nature. That's why I say no fish will glory in his presence. You got to stay in the spirit. Like what God would say, no fish will glory in his presence. You got to be spirit. Amen. We walk by faith, not by sight. And when you're walking by sight, God ain't going to tolerate that. God ain't going to accept that. It's, gotta, it's a faith walk. It's the faith walk. And to receive faith, as Romans 10, 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word. What are you hearing? Are you hearing gossip? Are you hearing newspapers out there and, and all these false reports and stuff? Are you hearing people what they're saying? Or are you hearing what God says in the word? You got to have your ears attentive to the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word. And the more you hear, the more you're going to grow. The more you, you practice it, the more you're going to grow. I guarantee you that. That's what it's back in 2 um, Peter 3.18, to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we got to grow in grace and knowledge by hearing the word of God. And the more we submit, the more we're going to grow. The more we come to ourselves, we're going to grow. I guarantee you, they're going to see God's glory all over your life. You see that? Amen? Um, Amen. Six. Amen. Because it's six. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for us. For the ungodly. See, what else? What God died for the entire humanity, man. He died for everybody. That's what says John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, gave his only begotten son, who will not perish, but everlasting life. It's through Jesus Christ, no other way. This is seven, Lord. Secondly, for a righteous man, one die. Even perhaps for a good man, someone will even, even dare to die. In other words, people will dare to die for somebody else, you know. That's the human way out there. It's like you see all these uh, Mexican people, that do that. They crucify themselves in crosses and stuff. All the people out there. They crucified the soul. God ain't gonna accept that sacrifice. They're trying to imitate the Lord. You're trying to die for somebody else, but it's no this in you because you're just a man. It gotta be through God Himself, the Son who came flesh, the holy heavenly God, the heavenly second Adam. This says in um, uh, thank you, Lord. Um, uh, because it's an eight. But God demonstrated his own, you see, his own, God demonstrated his own love towards us. While we were still we we're still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, it's through Christ, not through men. It's through Jesus Christ that died for me and you and gave us back eternal hope so we could be home forever in glory in heaven. That's why he is the resurrection. He is the life. And through him, that's why I say, no man goes through me through my father. It's through Jesus Christ. We're going to have the victory. We got to stay in that cross. We got to stay crucified. We got to walk with the Holy Spirit because what else is going to happen if you don't walk with the Lord, the enemy is going to come and deceive you and he's going to uh, put you upside down. And many have come through that, through, the, through that valley and it cost them big time. So we got to stay crucified, walk in the spirit, amen? So God could minister to us. God could show us who he is through, his, through the spirit. It's through the Father. It's, it comes through the Father's information, instructions through the Son, then through the Holy, through us. That's how they work. It's only one God. But that God's, it's through God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So we got to stay in the spirit to know what God's telling us, what he's giving us. Uh, but many go before the Lord. It's going to cause chaotic problems. You know what I'm saying? Um, of course, as you know, in... Um, and nine, and nine, verse nine. Much more than having not been justified, you see, by his blood, we also we are saved through through the wrath through him. You see, we are saved through the wrath through Jesus Christ. There's no other hope in this earth. There's no other way. I don't care. You name any other high God, so-called God. They don't have the mind, the power, and the might to protect you from the wrath that's coming. The wrath is coming sooner or later, man. The, soon the book of Revelation is going to be open. God's going to draw his wrath on this world. We got to make sure we're right with the Lord. So we won't perish because many are going to perish. The word says it, man. They're going to go. They're going to see it. They're going to perish. And that's what they choose. Because that's what they, 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 they went the wrong way. 
And God don't want that, but that's the choice of mankind when he's choosing. We're not submitting to God. Let's just say, look at this in 1 John 1, 7. 1 John 1, 7. But we walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. Why? Because the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed us from all sins. So we have been this literally, we got fellowship because the blood of Jesus Christ. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Without, it's the blood of washing. That's what God says in, and, well, that's what it says in Hebrews. Without the blood, there's no remission of sin. The blood will wash you from all sickness and sin. There's power in the blood. It's power in the blood. It's the blood of Christ. What says in, in Revelation? They all came with the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. So we got power with the blood. The devil knows that he can't stand the blood. When you use the blood, God washes you. When you, when you apply the blood to your life, your, your circumstances, your hand your words, your possession, your family, your homefulness, God's going to protect you from the powers of darkness. That's what I tell my brothers and sisters in the church. My, my brothers, counsel, I counsel, I told them to always apply the blood to yourself. Apply the blood to your mind, your thoughts. Apply the blood everything you have around you. So whatever's telling the tormentor, they, they got to go in the name of Jesus. And if they want to come and say, let's have some Eucharist. You and my wife, well, let's have a, let's do a little, little supper together, me and you, a little supper together. Hey, devil, come on, join him. He's going to run. He ain't going to be around there. You crazy? He knows the power of the blood. He can't stand the blood. Well, that's what destroyed him in the cross. The blood destroyed that devil. There's power in the blood. So you got to apply the blood constantly. Put on blood songs. Talk on the blood of Jesus Christ. But many don't do it. So what happens when he comes to torment him in there and his personal time, torment in different ways, instead of applying the blood, they start murmuring, complaining. Say, I thought God was with me. No, man. He said, yeah, God don't know. You got to apply the blood. That's one of the weapons of warfare. That's what Paul says for our weapons of warfare. And I can't almighty through by pulling down the stronghold. We got the word of God's one of the weapons. We got the name of Jesus. We got the blood of Jesus. You got to use those weapons in the name of Jesus. When you do fasting and prayer, what's just going to happen? All things, all high things are going to be cast out. All my is going to be cast out. All jokes are going to be broken in the name of Jesus. My God, can I get amen? Glory. Amen. 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 Verse 10. And so when we were enemies, we were we counseled to God. We were enemies. Why? Through God, through the what? Through the death of his, his son, which once more having been we counseled, we should also be saved by his life. You see, we were one time strangers, but now we, we, we counsel back to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ and the cross of Calvary. You've been delivered from the powers of darkness. You're walking out by faith, not by sight. You're a child of the heaven, not a child of the earth. The Lord said that you were in the world, but you're not out of the world. Therefore, children out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. So we got to expect that. God, people are going to hate us. Regardless, I don't care whoever, but they're going to hate us because you're a child of God. You know what? They don't, they don't hate you because your color, your strength. They hate you because the Christ has seen you coming out of you. They can't stand Jesus Christ because they're in bondage. You deliver. You see? You walk in light. They're walking in darkness. It doesn't mix. That's what's back in the epistle. John, Marvel not, brother, the world hates you. We're going to be hated. We're going to get prosecuted. But we got to expect that. Just make sure you're walking in the spirit. You don't, you don't fall in the trap. That's what says what God told his disciples and told them to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Amen. Look what says 18 in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18 here. Now all these things we are in God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. You see, and has given us the spirit of reconciliation. So we got we can reconcile back people to our life. God could use you if you walk in the spirit, you're being faithful to the Lord. God will use you. I don't care. You don't have to be a minister. He will use you to reconcile back the family to yourself. We turn it away, but let's pray together. Let's be counsel back so to the Lord. You hold hands. God's going to do it, man. God's giving us that ministry, each one of us in the body of Christ. But the Christ is the people not doing it. Instead of we counsel one another, but getting back to get unity, if you start, it's a fight in the house all the time, always arguing and problems. You got to rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Do not let the devil come and see you in your house. Rebuke him. Take him out of the house. Kick him out of the house. Say, no, you're not allowed here, devil, in the name of Jesus. You cannot be in God's presence. Why? Right? Because you be counsel yourself back to your brother and sister, your family, whoever. Amen. Glory. Amen. Glory. Amen. Look what it says in Romans 8 and verse 32. He who did not spare his only son, but delivered him up for us all. How should, not, how should he not with him also freely give us all things? See, if God will give us all freely, all things to us and be walking in the spirit, maybe stay faithful to his ways. He wants to bless us, but we got to pay, we got to put our part of the bargain. We got to stay faithful to his word, live what he says to his standards. He don't want sacrifice. He wants obedience. It's like a person. St. James says it's like a person seeing himself in the mirror. The word of God is like a mirror. You comb your soul. You wash your soul. You put your perfume in your cologne. And you, and you walk away. You forget who you are. Something where people, they read the word. They forget what they got to do. You got to be a doer of the word. You got to look at the mirror of the word of God and see yourself. Look at the mirror of the word of God. It's like a mirror. At the woman's mirror in the tabernacle. The, the wrong saucer. It was, that was called the top of the woman's mirror. Top of the word of God. When you look at the word, it's like a mirror. You see yourself. And you examine yourself and say, this is what I did. I should... And God's telling you what to do. He's going to tell you what to do, the word of God. Now, if you walk away from the word, that's your business. You're going to be consequences. 
And that's what the enemy wants, man. He don't want you to stay faithful to the word. Got to rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Uh, verse 11 of Romans 5, 11. Not only that, but not only that, but as we also rejoice in God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have one, we, we will now receive the reconciliation, right? We read that, right? Therefore, we will come back to the Lord and people. 12. Therefore, just as the, through one man sin entered the world, that was Adam, and death ring through sin, and this death spare all men. You see, spare all men because of all, all sin. That was Adam. He messed us up big time. That's first Adam. He completely sold out our, our, our heritage. He sold out our dominion to the enemy. What is They messed us up big time. But then he became the second according to where he looked. Look at this 13. But to now the law of sin has, was in the world, you see? But, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. So God had to establish the law to stop sinning, but people didn't want to submit it to that law. So people completed, completed committing all kinds of stuff, like the days of Noah, they were horrible. It was corrupt. That's why he, he was so mad that he, he, he regretted creating man upon the earth. He was crying. I said, wow, you know, but thank God he had a purpose for the human humanity. Look what it says. That's what it's, it's type and shadows in the old times, a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. Like David's a type of Jesus Christ, um, Isaac, uh, um, who was it's, it's a lot of types and shadows in the word of God. Joseph and Egypt, he was type of Jesus Christ. You see the shadows and types of the Lord. The only other Messiah is going to come. Uh, look what it says now in 13. Um, but until the law was was law was law was uh, the law and sin was in the world, sin was not yet imputed when there was no law. Look what it says 14. Nevertheless, death ring from Adam to Moses, even those who even all those who had not been seen according to the uh, likeness of the uh, transgression of Adam, see, who is the type of him who was to come. It was to Adam, he was, people, he's supposed to be an example, but he messes up big time. He was a type of one who was supposed to come. But look what says 15, but the free gift is, make, is not like the offense. But, but one man, one offense, many die. But much more, but the grace of God, the, the gift by the, the grace of the one man is Jesus Christ, should be, should, 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 should abundant to many. So it was to Jesus Christ, give us back eternal life. Through him, give us back. He took the office and the cross of Calvary. He gave us back a right position, a right heritage. He, he put himself in the cross to give us back our position. In other words, he became poor so we could become rich. He became sick, I could become healthy. He took everything upon himself so I could be completely delivered body, spirit, and soul for God's glory. So I could walk in the freedom of the spirit. That's what says the word in 2 Corinthians, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, with the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty, is freedom. You're walking in liberty. The devil cannot touch you because he cannot tell the person who's walking in liberty. But the person, but he could do whatever he wants with that person. 16. And the gift that is not like that which came through the one who sinned, that was Adam, but the judgment which caused came from one offense. You see, result, condemnation. But the free gift came for many offense, result, justification. For the first one messes up, we were, ju we were, to, we were judged, condemned, but thank God the one came, the second one came, Adam. He gave us uh, for a free gift. He gave for me for, for the offense, for a result for justifying us in, in, the, in the sight of the Father. So when the Father looked at us, he would justify in the, in the sight of the Father through Jesus Christ. And nobody could condemn you. That's what it says back in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There's no, I'm going to say I'll read it quickly. Uh, Romans 8, verse 1. Therefore, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You see? So you're walking in the spirit now. You've been delivered from the condemnation. You walk in the spirit. No, nobody could condemn you. No devil, no power. I don't care what. Cannot condemn you. Amen? Because you've been delivered from the powers of darkness. You're walking in the freedom of the spirit. You walk not according to the flesh, but after the spirit. You see? For the Lord, the spirit of life, and Christ, you have made me free from the law of sin and death. So it's two laws in the universe. The Lord, the spirit of life, and the Lord, uh, the law of sin and death. Those are two most powerful laws in the universe. And if you go back to the law, uh, law of sin and death, you're going to go back and bond. You're going to break the spiritual and it's going to get you, eat you up alive. But you got to continue walking the spirit of life. That's Jesus Christ. Stay in the spirit, walk in freedom. Do let nobody take away your freedom, my God. That's what we got freedom in this country. We can do whatever you want, but thank God we got laws. We got rules. We got regulations. We call it law and order. But when we go, people go beyond the limit. Got to be punishment. Got to be a, got to stop that and put everything in order. It's like that filthy ride they did in Washington. It's so disgusting when they go inside the White House, man. I'm supposed to be a sacred place. They're going to do all these people, man. But a punishment is going to come up on all of them. They're going to be judged. Nobody going to without permission. You see that? Oh my God. Um, where we at? Honey, where we at now? I think 17. 17. Thank you. 17. Okay, look what it says. But for by one man, let's see, for one man, offense, death, ring through the one that was Adam. Much more, those who received the abundance of grace. And of the gift of righteousness 
through all ring life. You see, that's th through the one who Je is Jesus Christ. You see, the first one messes up, but the second one gets back in the right position. He gives back our position, our heritage, and our rights and our privileges before God Almighty. And the devil knows that. But that's too bad. The devil, he cannot touch us. And uh, look what says 18. Therefore, as through one man, offense, judgment came to all men. You see, through Adam. Result, combination. Even so, through one man, that's Jesus, righteous, set free. The free gift come, came to all men, resulting justification, our life. It wasn't for Christ. What would be? It wasn't for the Lord Jesus Christ, the second Adam. My God, what would be? We all be in hell right now, all of us, man. It was through Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God, man, who had mercy came down, became like one of us. What says in Romans? Uh, I don't know. In John chapter one, let me go there. In John chapter one, the Gospel of John. If you go there, look what it says in chapter one. My God, look what it says in. Uh, thank you, Lord. Look what it says in. Uh, let me go here. Maybe give me a second. Uh, chapter one, verse ten. Look what it says in chapter one. I'm, I'm starting verse nine. This 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 was the light which was this is the light which gave light to every man who came to the world. Then he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world knew him not. You see, he was in the world, he was walking among us. He was in the world, the world know him not. He came into his own Jews, he came to his own, his own receiver not to the Hebrew people. But as many received to then he get the right to become children of God, those who believe in him, in his name. You see that? Who were not born after the blood, nor the word were not born of the blood or the word of the flesh or man, but of God. Those are the ones that are born again. Those are the ones that could, could believe in them. Those are the ones that going to bless and use them for his glory and give eternal right to those. Because we're walking in the order of God. We're walking in the right. We've been justified. We've been dealt from the powers of darkness. The next se second, the third stage is going to be soon. We're going to be glorified. That's called the rapture of the church. We're going to be just like Jesus Christ. We're going to have a, as says, Paul to the Corinthians, this immortal is going to put an immortality in a twinkling of an eye. We're going to be changed quickly. That's it. We out of here. That's going to happen very soon. That's what God says back in Peter, I went to him to pass for all come to repentance. But he's coming back for the bride that's coming back for us, the church of the living God. And those that don't say personal Christ, personal said they're going to get left behind the great tribulation. That's going to cost them big time. Instead of seeing the face of Christ, they're going to see the face of the Antichrist. And it's going to be horrible. That's what's going to happen according to the word. Uh, 18, therefore, as though one man offense, judgment came to all men, you see, which what Adam's messed up. Result from condemnation, even as through one man, man righteous, set free, set free gift given, given, came to all men, result justification of life. Thank God through Jesus Christ. Because it's 19. As for one man, this will be as many who are made sinners. That was Adam. He messes up. So also by one man, obedience, that's Jesus, our law, many will be righteous. Our Lord and Savior Jesus. Look at the second Adam. 20. Moreover, the law entered that offense, might should. I repeat, the, therefore the law entered that. Offense might abound, but with the sin abound, grace abound much more. You see that? So grace is going to abound more. With sin abound, grace is going to abound more. It's Jesus Christ. It's the world is full of sin. It's horrible. All at once, it's crazy, man. Chaotic. But thank God the grace of God is going to abound that. Look at that. But the bound where, but, but with sin abound, grace abounds much more. Through Jesus Christ's blood, everything could be washed. Everything could be forgiven in mankind. They could be come back to, back to the reconcil, back to the right order of God. In other words. Man was created to worship God in the beginning of time. And he, they, were, they were created to worship the creator and walk with the creator. That's what happened to Adam. He's supposed to do that, to, to leave the example, but he messes up. And the world started expanding. The world started growing, multiplying, but it became a disaster. The word says in Genesis, the earth was corrupt, and God was hurt. God said he repent to create a man upon the earth. But thank God he had a purpose for each one of us. He had an eternity past. He saw he's going to create a, a new uh, reconciles back to, to himself, to his son, Jesus Christ. That's in the Old Testament. I repeat, in the Old Testament, is types and shadows of Jesus Christ. What's the, what's the type of the Ark of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of Noah? Type of salvation. He was calling people, come, come. It's going to be a big flood. Come to the Ark. They didn't want to hear it. And they all got wiped out by the flood. 40 years and 40 nights. Why is the Ark a type of the salvation? Type of being saved. That's you got to come to the Ark. His name is Jesus Christ. He's going to save you through the cross. Is in the cross we're going to be delivered, healed, restored, and back to the right order, sons and daughters of God. And God have eternal life for him forever and ever. And the devil knows that. We've got to stay in the cross. We've got to stay with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, because he is the ark. You see that? And so in the Old Testament, it's all types and shadows of Jesus Christ. The old became a reality in the New Testament. It became a reality. It became a the shadow, became a substance. The word with the word says in John, and, and, be, and the word was, be, behold, the word became, became flesh. The word, this, this Bible became like one of us. Christ became like one of us. Full of grace and truth. My God. It wasn't for the little boy of Bia, man. 
Um, conclusion, what's this 21? So as in sin, so, so as in sin ring in death, right? Even so, I was through Adam, he messed us up. So grace might ring through the righteous, through the eternal life, who? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. What a beautiful service, I mean, a verse. So as the soul that in sin, ring through death, damaged everybody in humanity, century after century. But then God, he came and died for us. He had a purpose with us, and he did. Even so, grace now might ring through the righteousness, you see? Through eternal life, who? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There's no other way, saints. The eternal life comes from above. His name is Jesus Christ. They don't come to no Buddha, honey, Krishna. Give me any, no, to no people, nobody, man. They don't have a solution. It's Jesus Christ we got to look at. That's what it says in Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, your author and finisher, your faith. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Like Peter, God told Peter, come, Peter. And Peter, the Lord started walking on waters. And Peter, it's the only human being started walking on waters, man. But what happened to Peter? He started sinking in the water. He took his eyes off the master. Why, what did it mean cause him to sink? Faith and doubt. Faith and doubt. We got to build those spirits in the name of Jesus. You build faith out of your life and doubt and look at the law and start walking in your personal waters, man. Believe the Lord. See his glory out in your life and your family. See deliverance because he got the solution. He's going to give you the victory. He's going to put you to the other side. When he tell you come, it means come, follow him. Pick up your, that's what God said, pick up your cross daily. You got to pick up your cross. You got to pick up that cross. I spoke about this yesterday by picking up your cross. You got to follow the Lord. That's what God said. He that loves more than Father, more than me, cannot follow me, cannot be my disciple. We got to follow the Lord. First, he's number one in our hearts, then our families, our husbands, our wives, our mothers, everybody, and our children. He got to be first in your heart, the number one in your love in your heart. That's why he told the Jewish people, love, he told them his rent. He said, love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, with all thy strength, right? With all thy heart, right? You got to love the Lord. Everything, you got to love the Lord. Because he knows the intentions of our heart. He sees everything. And uh, I want you to bless you guys. I continue seeking the Lord, my brothers and sisters. And I pray that God spoke to you through this beautiful chapter 5 of Romans. And then through Christ, we got the victory. He became the second Adam. Well, so he, through Adam, we died. But through death, through, through life, and it's in Christ Jesus Christ. Because he is the abundant life. That's what it says John 10, 10. The thief only comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. But those I come to give abundant life. And abundant life is forever. Now in the one to come. God bless you. Bishop. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ has abolished the law. He's made us new creatures in him. We definitely have to wait on the Lord. Adam screwed up the whole thing, but Jesus Christ made a new man, a new living way. And it's by the spirit of God. As many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. We cannot live according to a corrupt nature, but according to God. Today, the Lord's put something in my heart, and I will also like to speak on those that wait on God. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 12, and we're going to be reading um, verse 1 to 3, then 5 to 7 and 11. The book is... Acts chapter 12, we're going to talk about how God, those that wait on God, because the thing is that a lot of us like to go before the Holy Spirit, and that's so dangerous. My husband said it, and now I will echo it. It's dangerous to go before God. Many people lead to their own understanding. They, they, they do their own thing. They walk according to their own will. You know, if God calls you, isn't the one that's supposed to tell you how to live is God? Even when they made the tabernacle, um, everything was done according to God. The laven, uh, the curtains, the candlesticks, the sacrifices that were being killed. If anybody touched the ark that wasn't supposed to touch it, died. The ark of covenant. Uzziah, right? Uzziah thought that he was doing a good thing. It was going. It was in a cart. It was going to fall, and he stretched out his hand, and he winded up dying. I mean, he had good intentions. Even Apostle Paul, when he went out with his religious way, he thought he was doing something good. But the truth was that he didn't know God. 
and he winded up doing and taking the wrong steps, what were the consequences? It must have been very hard to be serving Jesus with that kind of pain in your heart, knowing that you made that not you that he made all those foolish mistakes in 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 a so-called I'm serving God attitude. He was a man that was well studied in the scriptures, but he had no revelation of the truth. And you see, that's where it becomes dangerous, Raphael. When you don't sit with the Holy Spirit and you don't let the Holy Spirit guide you and lead you, we could become, not you, we, with a W, capital W, right? We could become religious fanatics and never be led to the right way. That's why God says, um, he called Peter the Rock. He said, um, the fact that he got the revelation of the Father and that Jesus was the Christ. See, he, he said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father, which is in heaven, revealed it to you. So it has to come through revelation. That's the rock. That's the key to the kingdom, the revelation of the kingdom. Because, see, the letter kill it. But the spirit brings life to the letter. And that comes through the anointing. That comes through the offices. That comes through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And that's where a lot of men gets messed up. Amen. But the body of Christ that's waiting on God, the body of Christ <clears throat> that is truly, honestly seeking God and they're humbling themselves before God, like it says in, in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will come and heal their land. Then I will come. You know what's that? To be a religious person all your life and never serve God in spirit and truth? The issues of the heart are so important. But here I'm going to talk about a little bit of God's protection to those that wait on God. And I'm going to start in um, Acts. You guys can follow me. Acts chapter 12. It says, now about the, you got to excuse my reading because I know that uh, sometimes I pronounce things wrong, but if you know anything about me, <laughs> my reading and my, and my uh, writing are an act of a miracle. So bear with my uh, pronunciations, all right? If you could read better than me, praise the Lord. About now, about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Now, this is a persecution that's happening to the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. So, obviously, there was death going on to the church at this time. First, the by first this apostle. He got martyred. First, one of the apostles, James. First one to go. Got martyred. Like Three, First apostle. and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, because remember that the Jews did not have the revelation of who Jesus, you Most know what's that to, to have a relationship with God, to see the miracles, to know the miracles, to know the whole law from, from Genesis to Malachi and not have a revelation of Jesus Christ. That's deep right there. The Jews were happy that the Christians were being killed. Wow. It says, he proceeded further to take Peter. In other words, since he saw the excitement that the Jews had and he had favor, that kind of reminds me of what's going on now in the nations of the world. All this persecution and all these things that are happening, the people are so excited about it and they're so happy. You know, there's the left and then there's the, the conservatives and they're so happy and they, they're so against the church. But I'm anyway, I'm not going to get into politics on what's happening in this end time, but it just kind of like reminded me of what I'm seeing today. You know, they're calling bad good and, and good bad. 
They're bringing out laws that, that God didn't put. Anyway, and, and it's pleasing the people. Uh, I'll start again in three. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. I'm going to jump to verse five. Peter, therefore, was kept in the prison, platform. but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. In other words, there was a close guard over Peter so that he wouldn't escape. There was guards there. And it says here, bond him with chains and keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him as a light shineth in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, rise up quickly and the chains fell off his hands. Now you see that King Herod was killing the church. You see that this pleased Herod and the Jews. And you see that uh, Peter was taken and put in prison. He was chained up. And you can even see that the church was praying for Peter. And you can see that God answers this prayer by sending supernatural help. God sent supernatural help. In verse, and I'm jumping in your personal time. If you want to read this story, it's going to bless you. But I'm going to jump to verse 11. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hands of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. So this angel was sent to Peter to free him, to deliver him. And Peter, when he came to, because he thought maybe it was a vision or a dream, he said, you know what? God has truly delivered me. See, God is willing and able to deliver us of our afflictions. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Now, let's go to Psalms 33, verse 20. And my portion is if you're the child of God that's waiting on God, God is going to help you. Don't get despair. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't blame God for what you're doing. No. Believe God. You have to have faith. In verse 20, our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. 21, our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. If we wait in God, he's going to help us. He's going to help our soul. He's going to protect us mentally physically, emotionally, spiritually. He's going to help us financially. He's going to keep our, our physical body. Sometimes our trials are longer than what we want. But you know what? God is working it out for our good because he says it over and over and over and over through this whole Bible that he keeps us, that he watches over us. Let's go to Psalms 37 real quick. I mean, Psalms 32, right there, verse 7 to 11. I hope somebody's being blessed. 
If God could send Peter an angel to help him, and I believe an angel, the same way I know that Satan is real and that God's given me power to trample on scorpions, serpents, and upon all the power of the enemy, I also know that angels are real. God gives his angels over you. He puts angels in your life to protect you, to guide you, to build you up. To, to lead, you know, all through the Bible, it says that angels were sent to minister to us. It, the Bible even says that we got to be careful who we minister to because we can minister to angels unaware. And um, 32, 7 to 11, it says, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt come past me about with songs of deliverance. You know why? Because when God does something for you, something happens in your heart. It's like a song of gratitude and you start singing. Huh? You, I, I, I'm not a singer, so I'm not going to start singing. But you start singing beautiful songs to God. Like, thank you, Lord. You just, like a little hymn comes into your heart. Because you're so grateful and you're sharing that beautiful peace. It says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which you should go. I will guide thee with my eye. But the problem is we want to guide ourselves. Why if God is saying, I will guide thee, we don't trust and believe that he will guide us. He says, be not as a horse or as a mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held with bits and brittles, lest they come near unto you. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. You see, I told you the sorrow is not for the righteous. It's for the wicked. The Bible says, Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers out of us, out of them all. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord is to make us rich, enriched in every way. And he adds no sorrow. If there's sorrow in your heart, you have to test your spirit. Because it says many sorrows shall come to the wicked. But he that trusts in the Lord, mercy shall come past him about. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Uh, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. See, if your heart is good and you're obeying God and you're doing what he needs you to do, God says, rejoice in me. I'm your defender. I'm your shield, I'm your buckler, I'm your guide, I'm your lead, I am with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. If you can't rest without, you can't rest without God. You, it's impossible. That's why he says, my peace I give to you, not like this world gives. We have to understand that we have I was telling the, 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 the in-house church that we have an inheritance of God. And they asked me, Pastor, is our inheritance now? Think about it. Is joy for now? Is peace for now? And you're probably thinking, oh, but these things are all like qualities that they're kind of spiritual. Yeah, they're things that the world don't have. The world cannot have peace in the midst of the storm. The Bible says that the world is afraid because of the things that are coming upon them. In other words, instead of them walking in fear and in love and in joy and in peace, they're walking in confusion and fear and, and bitterness and hate and anger. And it's escalating higher and higher. Meanwhile, we have this garment of, of joy and peace where we're just bouncing around, hopping around, singing to Jesus worshiping the Lord, and they're looking at us like, what are you so happy about? Because they cannot, they don't have the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the world does not have the Holy Spirit. 
Let me show you that verse. Let me see if I find it. One minute. Hallelujah. It's it's in the book of John. The world. Hold on. It's John 14. Get me the verse. Gotcha. Hallelujah. Praise now, um, in Psalms 37, 4, it says, delight yourself Man. also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noontime. He says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of yes. him who pr prospers in his ways, because of the man who brings <coughs> wicked devices to pass. <clears throat> Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in the way to do evil. And yeah. verse, and you jump to verse 34, and it says, wait on the Lord and keep his ways, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land when the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. In other words, we will see the judgment that's coming on the wicked. We don't want to see it, but God says we will see it. If we learn to wait on the Lord, if we understand oh, that our God is God going, going to help us the way he helped Peter, wicked. God is going oh. to make a way. A lot of people don't understand that, uh, um, BJ, did you find it? Yeah. Give me the verse. Uh, chapter uh, John uh, 14, verse 17. Okay, let me go to it. John 14, 17 says, as a matter of fact, I'm going to read a little bit before in verse 12. Verily I say unto you, he that believes in me, the works that I do, he shall also do. And greater works than these shall he do also, because I go to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. If you yeah. ask anything in my name, I will do it. If That's you right. love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you yeah. forever. Even the spirit of the truth, yeah. whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, but I will come to you. In other words, the Holy Spirit is with us. He's in us. The world doesn't know the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit that's in us is our inheritance. He has sealed us with his Holy Spirit. And his Holy Spirit is producing everything. You see, the thing is that we limit God. You cannot limit God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The heaven and the earth were created by God. The spirit of God hovered until the word of God came out and then everything was manifested. And this is why we constantly have to produce the word of God so the Holy Spirit can manifest because he manifests through the word. Just like the beginning, we still producing for the Holy Father. Hallelujah. The world doesn't know the Holy Spirit. The world doesn't understand that we are blessed of God. The world cannot see the ability and, and the anointing that's put on the church. Even if you try to explain to them, you know what the only thing the world can receive? You want me to tell you? Come to the cross. If you speak to the world about the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, you're wasting your time. Stop that. It's foolishness. You trying to preach to the world uh, the coming of Christ, they're not going to understand that. You have to tell the world that they have sinned 
And there's a solution for that sin, which is Jesus Christ. And the redemption is coming through the cross. God's given every man a measure of faith and they can only, once they become born again, everything else is going to be given to them. The only thing that's available for the world right now is the message of the cross. And the only thing that's available for the church right now is stay in the cross so that you can receive the promises of God. Who understands that? Say amen. Because this is important for the body of Christ. Amen. To know. Amen. You're going to waste your time trying to explain to somebody the end time prophecies because everybody knows that this world is going straight to hell if something doesn't happen. But telling people that they're going to hell is not going to help them. What's going to help them is telling them that Jesus Christ died for them and he forgives them of their sin. Hallelujah. We have to learn how to wait patiently so that that message can grow in their heart. Who says amen? Amen. Amen. Look what Proverbs 3 says. The world doesn't know the Holy Spirit. How do you expect the world to understand? Book of Proverbs, what, what chapter? Uh, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me. And I should direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Eight says, it shall be health to your navel and marrows and to your bones. See that? You want help? Obey God. Psalms 40, 1 to 3. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit and out of a murray clay and set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings and he has put a new song in my mouth even praise unto my God many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord in other words people are gonna see the victory that's in your life see we're not Lord over you but we gotta teach you we're not leading you, but we got to instruct you. I cannot be Lord over the flock of God, but I can teach the flock of God how to walk with the Lord, how to trust the Lord, how to take the steps that you have to take. The just lives by faith. Romans 1 17. This is God's gospel. This is not my gospel. This is not my way. These are not my ways. I didn't write this book. I'm instructed to teach it, to preach it, to correct those that are in error, and to guide through the Spirit of God. Romans, in conclusion, 170. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. 80 says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness. 
of all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man who hold the truth in unrighteousness. If you have this word and you don't do what God is telling you to do, if you don't let the Holy Spirit lead you, if you don't let the word of God cleanse you and change you and transform you, and if you don't take God at his word, because this word is able to cleanse your soul. This word is able to save your soul. And I'm going to conclude with James 121. Wherefore, James 121, I hope everybody got it. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superficiality of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. 22, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. In other words, if you don't do what this word is telling you to do, you become your own deceiver. You don't need the devil <laughs> to deceive you. You become your own deceiver. You know what I learned in God? I have power and authority to rebuke the devil and his kingdom. But no matter how much I minister to a soul and tell that soul to sit down and submit to God, I cannot rebuke flesh. A person is going to choose what they're going to choose and they're going to do what they want to do, how they're going to want to do it. And no matter how much I pray rebuking the devil, I cannot change the heart of a man. We choose God's will freely. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, some volunteers to pray this morning. Uh, can I have a volunteer for prayer this morning? I'll pray. I'll pray this morning. Uh, go ahead, Raphael. Pray, please. Father, we gather here, we're thankful to listen to these words that guide our minds and our heart and our soul, that you deliver us from the temptation and all evil things, that your words will come forward to each and one of our minds and those who lost, that you are the one and savior only that who could deliver all of us from the temptation and all wicked things in life. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive those who do harm to us that they don't they understand, they don't understand the words of yours, but that your words will reach out to their minds and their hearts and transform them and deliver them from all wicked things. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Someone else, I need a volunteer for prayer. Come on, prayer team, let's pray. I'll pray. Pray, Sylvia, pray, pray. So, Father, thank you, my Lord, for your word this morning. Thank you uh, because it molds us and uh, it, um, it br brings us closer to you, my Lord. Father, thank you for tribulation because tribulation um, builds up our character, Father, and I pray for every brother and sister, my Lord, who has received your Holy Spirit, Father, that you give them wisdom, Father, that you help us to overcome um, the wilds of the enemy, the trickery of the enemy, Father. We ask you to give us strength in you, my Lord. Thank you for loving us so much, for drawing us to you for giving us uh, your Holy Spirit, Father, for sealing us with your Holy Spirit, Father. We thank you so much um, for your love, your kindness, your patience with us, oh Lord. And uh, thank you for making us your children above all, my Lord. It's such a great privilege. And you're so kind and patient with us, Lord. We thank you so much for that. You're the best father anyone can ever have. Yes, you are, Lord. Thank you spirit that ministers and guides us and comforts us and 
convicts us, Father, when we do uh, what is wrong before you, my Lord. And Father, help us to be attentive to your Holy Spirit. Help us not to quench it, my Lord. Um, and I just thank you for my brothers and sisters, my Lord. And um, I ask you to make them mighty in, in, your, uh, in your strength, in your wisdom, Father. Um, reveal the purposes that you have for them, Father. Let us grow stronger and closer to you daily, my Lord. We love you. We thank you so much, Father. And Father, draw all men to you, my Lord, so that they can come to the cross, so that they can be saved, so that they can know what how beautiful it is to have you within us, inside of us, Lord. It is so beautiful. It quenches the thirst of man, the emptiness that man has that you left there for you to fill, my Lord. Draw all men to you, my Lord. And Father, I ask your Holy Spirit to minister to all who don't know you, my Lord. And do the miraculous, Lord. I want to hear the miraculous, the miraculous transformation, the miraculous, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the miraculous yeah, transformation that you do in people, Lord. I love to hear their testimonies. And uh, bring the body of Christ together, my Lord. Father, don't let anything divide us. Amen. Anything, especially the things of this world, Lord, the things that are going on. People are, are uh, separated because of, of, of things about politics, my Lord. You're, the body of Christ, Father, bring them together and remind them that we are not of this world, but we're from your kingdom, O oh Lord. Yes, we are, Lord. Father, let us focus on you and the eternal things, Father, that you have, you're preparing for us, Lord. Help us to focus on the eternal things that you're preparing for us, O oh Lord, and not on the uh, worldly things, Father. Please help us in this area because we can... We can be distracted so easily in these areas, oh Lord. Help us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can I have another volunteer for prayer? Cat, pray. Dear God, Father Jesus, Lord, we thank you for. Amen for your word this morning. I thank you, dear Lord God, Jesus. Amen for the word, the wisdom that we received, Father Jesus. Thank you for speaking to us through the Holy Spirit, Father Jesus. We were able to receive, Father. And um, Father, I just give you thanks and praise, dear Lord God, Jesus, because you are perfect, Lord. You are perfect, dear Lord God, Father Jesus. Amen. And there is nothing that you cannot do for us, Father. You can do all things if we just believe your word says that any everything is possible for those that believe amen so lord um i pray that you continue father jesus to give give each one of us father jesus amen the the the, the faith amen to the strength um uh the the Father Jesus, the certainty to know, Father, amen, that you are backing us up, amen, that you are right there with us, Father Jesus, amen, that whatever situation you may be going through, Father Jesus, you are already there, amen, you already know everything that was going to happen in our lives, because you already wrote, a, you already, before we were born, you already knew what each one of us were going to go, was going to go through father jesus and then you know exactly road for us was going to be for each one of us father jesus every one of us father jesus uh, have a uh, have a, a different obstacle a different thing that they, they have to go through father jesus but in the midst of all of that father in the midst of all that process in the middle of whatever we may be going through dear lord god father jesus lord we are one body, Father Jesus. Amen. We are one church, Father Jesus. And Lord, and, and there is nothing, nothing that you cannot do. 
Father Jesus. Amen. To push us forward, to help yes, us Lord, to get Jesus. through whatever situation, Father Jesus, we may be going through, Lord Father Jesus. And to you, we give you the glory. To you, we give you the, the praise. And, 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 um, and I thank you, Lord. I thank you, dear Lord God, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for loving us, Father Jesus, because you are love, Jilla God, Father Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you. Hallelujah. Can I have another volunteer to pray? Let me pray. I'll pray. I'll pray. Let me pray and then you pray. I'll pray. Father, I thank you so much, Hallelujah. Lord. You're such a beautiful God, Lord. Your word says that we got to wait on you. And the same way you saved Peter, Lord God, you can save us. Oh, your word is just so glorious, Lord. And it's so beautiful. All you tell us is how much you love us through the whole Bible. You tell us you love us. You want to guide us. You want to protect us. You want to change us. You want to do good for us. You tell us to be careful with evil because judgment comes to evil. You tell us to keep away from evil, Lord, because evil is going to be judged and you've made a way out for us. You tell us not to be foolish, Lord. And Father, I thank you for all the warnings. I thank you for your leading and your guiding and ministering to us, Lord God. I thank you that even though there are many troubles and trials and tribulations and, and so many things that make us uncomfortable, at least I'm not being killed like in the days of the Jews, in the days of the book of Acts that the apostles had gave their lives. We have the liberty to, to preach your gospel freely through different platforms. We have the, the liberty to minister your word to the nations of the world times are so different ouch ouch, ouch 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 get down watch about times it. are so different lord i just love you so much father i pray for each and every one of the hearers on zoom every one of the prayer teams that i know that we go through so many things different things lord god and and our life challenges are different with our children, with our homes, with our finances, with our future, with our uncertainty. How we could take up and look at things and wonder if these things are for us in this life. But Lord, even though we don't have the answers, we know that you have the answers. But even though we don't know what's in front of us, because tomorrow's not even promised. What we do know is your word says that those that wait for the Lord will run. We will not be weary. We will mount up like eagles. We will soar. We'll walk through the waters. We will, when the fire tries to quench us, it will not burn. So, Father, we thank you because you always deliver us. You're always with us. You're always comforting us. You're always guiding us. You're always leading us. You're always, 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 Holy Spirit, with us. And I love you so much for this, Lord God. I love you, Father, for being God. This is not by what I'm feeling today or what I'm thinking today. This is about your word and your truth. And your word is truth. Your spirit is here to lead us and guide us. According to Romans 8, 14, you're building us up. You're taking away the old and putting in the new. You're renewing our minds. You're teaching us about your kingdom. You're teaching us about your authority. You're teaching us about your will. You're teaching us about your ways. You're teaching us about our calling. You're teaching us about your purpose and your plan. And you're positioning us so that we can be fishermen of men, effective warriors in your kingdom. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for that with all my heart. I bind principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness, and high places. 
I bind Satan in his kingdom. I bind every demonic, wicked host. Any spirit that's contrary to the Holy Spirit, I bind it and rebuke it. And I command it to go from the prayer team, from our life. And I pray that we're able to rest in your presence and wait for your will. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Last one, last volunteer, who I got? Hello. Go ahead, BJ. Amen. Father, we just thank you on today, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And uh, thank you for always uh, speaking through the leadership, Lord. Father, continue to grow us, Lord. Grow us in, in your name, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Grow our characters, Lord. Father, we just glorify your name. We thank you for the Zoom meeting today, Lord. We thank you for the worship that we did. We thank you for the learning that we are doing, that we are getting growing in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we glorify your holy name. We just thank you, Father God. If we had a thousand tons, we couldn't thank you more than enough. Father, we just going to continue to grow in grace and knowledge, Father God. I thank you for all my Zoom brothers and sisters that's on here today, Lord. Continue to bless them, cover them with your blood, Father God. Continue to cover us with your blood. Break every yoke, Lord, that's not of you in Jesus' name. Bless our prayer time and our study time, Father. Bring revelation of your word to us, Father God. Let us continue to grow in grace and knowledge of you, Lord. Because that's so important, Lord. And Father, when it comes to the battles, we're going to overcome, Lord. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that even in the time of, of, of this sorrow that we are in, the time of sorrow, the way the world is going, Father God, but we are in Goshen. We are, we are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. And we are highly protected, divine protected, Lord. Jehovah Nisi is around us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Your fire is around us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, even let us rest to your word. Rest to your word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we just glorify your name. We thank you on today, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I can't wait for tomorrow for the next Zoom. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. I sense a peace of God, a beautiful peace. You know that? I really have this amazing peace in my heart, a stillness. And I thank God for that this morning. Hallelujah. Receive that right now. A peace and a stillness in your heart of the Lord. Just receive that. Just receive that. He wants to give you a peace and a stillness in your heart. I sense that in my heart. And if he's giving it to me, I believe he's going to give it to you too. So receive the blessing of God. I bless you and I pray that God protects you. I pray that the Holy Spirit leads you and guides you and comforts you. And that you just may not become worried. Don't become worried. Just continue to have faith and peace in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen, amen. It's time to say goodbye now. Jackie, can you say goodbye? Bye, everybody. Have a blessed day. Amen. Kat, can you say goodbye? Bye, everybody. Have a good one. God bless you. Amen. Bless you. Angelic voices, time to say goodbye. God bless you all. God bless. Apostle, time to say goodbye. Uh, Sim, time to say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. And blessings. Have a blessed day. God Amen. bless you. Amen. Amen. Tell Aruna we're praying for her and we love her. Hallelujah. Kiona. Sure, thank you. Time to say goodbye, Kiona. You all have a wonderful day. Bless you all. Amen. Amen. Um, Sister Sylvia, Lencerado, time to say goodbye. God bless you, everyone. Love you guys. See you tomorrow if it's God's will. Amen. Amen. Right. Tell Vinny we say goodbye. 
Vinny, you want to say goodbye? Bye. Love you, Vin. Love you too. Lizardo, you there? Faster. I think he fell asleep. I'm right here. Ah. Can you please say goodbye? God bless everybody. Have a wonderful day. God bless. See you guys tomorrow. Amen. Bye-bye now. This is Messengers of Light once again telling you we love you in the Lord. I'm here with my prayer team, and we pray that the Lord Jesus Christ continue to bless you. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye.